These smart speakers are constantly listening and recording our conversations without our permissions. But are they really? So I devised a way to monitor these smart speakers to see what are they actually doing and what are they uploading to the mothership. So let me show you what I discovered. Let's do this. Break it down now, phone, gadget, apps, insta, tech it, tech it, yeah, yeah. So I asked you guys which devices you have in your home. I thought it was a pretty innocent enough question, but it turns out that many of you were 100% convinced that everything you say around these devices was being recorded and you're not gonna have this in your home. I mean, look at some of these comments. Now, I fully understand these types of comments. We're literally putting in a device in our home that connects to the internet with a microphone whose main job is to constantly listening and reply with bits of information. This begs three big questions. Number one, how much listening and recording does it actually do? Number two, what does it do with that information? And number three, most importantly, is it secretly recording and sending our info without our permission? So I wanted answers to these questions and I set up a little trap that I can spy on the spire to see what's going on. Oh, before we get started, I'm gonna show you how I do this with the Google Home Mini as that's the device that I have. Let me know in the comments if you want me to run these tests on other smart speakers, which I'll go out and buy and then run these tests for you. So let's start with the first question. Is the Google Home Mini constantly listening? And the answer is, yes it is. But it's not what you think. More of that um, coming up shortly. According to Google, the assistant starts in standby mode, waiting to be activated. In standby mode, it processes short snips of audio, a few seconds, to detect an activation, such as the trigger word, OK Google. If no activation is detected, then those audio snippets are not sent or saved to Google. In other words, it is listening. It's listening for the trigger words, and then it starts to record what you want it to do. It takes that recording, then converts it from audio to text, so it can do that search. When it finds information, it then uses technology called Parallel Tekatron to convert text into human-like speech and gives us back that information. Okay, so we know that it has to record our command, which means it is listening for that. So the next big question is, what does it do with that recording? It saves all your assistant and voice instruction to your Google account. There, you can not only see the information, but you can also delete it, and you can set up rules not to have it saved in the first place. Let me show you where you can find this information, because it can be a little tricky to find. So here's where you want to head out to. It's myactivity.google.com. And you want to click on Find by Date and Product. Click on that. And then you want to scroll down until you tick the Assistant, and scroll all the way down until you see Voice and Audio. So basically, we're filtering everything that Google has on us, but we're only looking for the stuff from the Assistant and anything to do with voice. So as you can see, all my queries are right here. It tells you what I actually asked it to do. This is what I said. And then here is the response that it kind of read back out to me. Now, if you want to get rid of a specific one, what you can do is click on the details tag. And then when that comes up, three little dots at the top. Let's just say I don't want anyone knowing that I asked this particular question. Click on the delete button and then it basically disappears. Now, this is laborious to go through these one by one by one. But what you can do is click on the details options. And you see at the bottom, why this activity? Well, this activity was saved because of the web and app activity. I'm gonna show you what that means. Click on manage, and here is the web and app activity. Now, what is this? This saves your activity on Google Sites, apps, including associated info like location to give you faster searches, better recommendation, blah, 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 blah. This is the information that Google essentially saves on you. Now you have the option to stop saving the audio recording. Simply untick that and it will stop saving the audio recordings altogether. But what happens if you don't want to do that? You just want to automatically delete it after a period of time. No problem. You see there's an option there called auto delete, which is currently set to off. Click on that and now you can choose delete any activity older than three months or delete any activity older than 18 months or 36 months. And that's how you do it automatically. Now that we know that Google has your voice data, does anyone else have access to it? Actually, yes. Google hires independent contractors around the world to listen and transcribe your audio recording. 
picked up by the Google Assistant. Now, before you freak out, Google confirmed in a statement to Business Insider, and they said that its language experts transcribe a small set of queries around 0.2% of all the audio snippets. The data is anonymized, contain no sensitive information, and even the audio is masked so it doesn't actually have your voice but a disguised version of that. Now, the big one that most people want to know, how do we know that Google Home Mini isn't still recording and sending anything that it overhears? What's stopping it from overhearing our entire conversations that we have around it and simply taking all that and throwing that out back up into the mothership? And that's a very fair question since we have no exposure to what's really going on. So here is what I did. After a chat with my friend John from You Do It, I created an entire Wi-Fi network just for my Google Home Mini. I gave it a new Wi-Fi name and I locked it so that the only device that can access that Wi-Fi is the Mini. Anything else that even tries to connect to it, even with the right password, will simply not be allowed onto that network. I then began monitoring all the traffic going from the Google Home to the internet and from the internet coming straight back down to it. Now, what would you expect to happen? Well, for me, if it's listening and recording our conversation, then we would be able to see a big spike of traffic as it takes all that data and then uploads it to the crowd. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that big spike in traffic. I'm also gonna look for traffic that when I do expect that traffic, like when I ask it a question, then I do expect a big chunk of data to go into the web and then come back down with that information. So, let me show you what happened. So here is my system and you can see it's tracking the data, both traffic going in and traffic coming out. Now you can clearly see these data being moved on the network, even though I didn't ask Google anything. So before you think, aha, I knew it was recording, well, the data is pretty, pretty tiny. And all it is, it's things like MDNS telling everyone on the network, hey, I'm here in case you need to use me. Let me show you what happens when you actually ask it a question. Okay, Google, what's the time? 6.59 p.m. So there is no denying it. Whenever I ask it a question, you can see it's got that nice big green spike and even the blue spikes basically showing that it sent that information out into the web and received it. Now, let's get a little bit more complicated and show you what that looks like when you ask a question that's beyond just the time. Okay, Google, what's the distance between Dallas and Los Angeles? Dallas is 1,436 miles away from Los Angeles. So once again, the spike is there, and this time it's slightly higher because I asked it for a more complicated bits of information to come back with. So let me show you one more when you ask you to play a podcast. Okay, Google, resume podcast. All right, playing podcasts on Spotify. So as you can clearly see, there's a visible difference when it's sending out a lot of data onto the network. So if it was indeed listening to all our conversations happening all around us, these graphs will be so much higher all the time. So now some of you may be thinking, well, what happens if it uploads it at night? So here is a graph where I left it running overnight. You can see the little blue line is when I had my little monitoring system open the entire time but there are no spikes. The only time there are spikes is like now when I give it a command. So even when you let this thing run and over 24 hours, and in fact, I ran this test multiple, multiple times, still no big spikes, 24 hours a day. The only time the traffic spikes is when you issue that command. So is Google Home Mini listening to you? Yes, it is, but only to do its job. Is it an open speaker to Google to spy on your conversations? Uh, no. If you're worried about people tracking you and listening to you without your knowledge, check out this video over here. Hit the head below to subscribe if this is your first time here. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and I'll see you in this video or this one or, or, or both. You can go watch both. I'll see you there.